How is it going guys? Drew Peacock here back with another video and today we have respect all builds and by that I mean fuck ricers okay maybe i shouldn't have said that right on the intro i'm gonna get demonetized but what i'm saying is we're gonna be respecting real builds we're not going out and giving out participation awards for amazon sponsored builds wish.com sponsored builds i want to see some real builds some actual grease monkey shit that being said i took my grease monkey shit build out yesterday to mexico uh check it out link in description down below the super did good if you want to see some super racing, just go watch it. You're going to enjoy it. Anyways, let's go ahead and start respecting the heck out of these builds. First build is a 2016 Ford Focus ST3 diesel. Yes, it is a diesel. The owner says it's on a Puma Speed Stage 3 Plus map, and it is making 290 to 300 wheel horsepower and around 680 newton meters of torque. It has BC racing coilovers, R Sport intercooler, R Sport DPF delete, Puma Speed boost pipes, and more. The exterior of this car is nice and tasteful. He didn't go and put a bunch of bullshit on it, and that's what we look for on Respect All Builds. We look for taste, some quality. Mwah. Next build doesn't have much of a build sheet. It just says, yes, it's boosted. I'll let you figure out the rest. Well, there's a missing hood, so weight reduction right there. We got A-pillar gauges. 350Z interiors are pretty nice. There's a lot of plastic, but I think it's a really nice driver's car. I feel like I've seen this car in SoCal. I think I saw it at a meet the other day, so I'm a little skeptical if it's the actual owner that sent this car. At the meet, I believe it was on Slicks, if I'm thinking about the same car. It's got a roll cage in there. I mean, it looks like an absolute beast. I would just toss a hood on there. I mean, even if you want to show off the beautiful motor, just toss a, a clear hood on there. I don't know if they make that. I know Honda boys love that shit, but I don't know if they make that for 350Zs. Anyways, I'm sure it's a whole lot of fun to drive. For sure better than a clapped out 350Z. And I think a lot of people, if not everyone, is going to agree with me on that one. I just wish we could see more of it. I mean, it's not what I had planned, but here's a video of it racing. It's potato quality, but that bitch was moving. Uh, it looked like he was racing a BMW of some sort. Like I said, potato quality. Just uh, don't street race, you know? Save it for Mexico. You guys know me. I'm not a huge fan of these golfs, but this one is full bolt-on multi-port injection IS20 GTI Turbo based hybrid turbo. E85, and it's making 530 wheel horsepower and 450 wheel torque. I might not like how the car looks, it might look a little basic in my book, but I mean, I'm a man of horsepower. I'm a fan of horsepower. I beat off to horsepower. 530 horsepower on a little egg? Hmm. Sign me up. To me, it just looks like, I don't know, it just looks like a soccer mom car, kind of. Just like a smaller soccer mom car. I get it's a hatchback and everything, but it just, it doesn't, uh, I don't know. To me, <laughs> Hey, 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 with respect all builds, not rice or nice. What are you doing here? Do not use respect all builds in your subject bar if it ain't a build. Wheels and a front splitter and some headlights, that ain't a build. I'm sorry, Chief. Save it for rice or nice. Moving on. This is what I'm talking about. A 1999 Mustang GT Coyote Swap. He says, did all the work himself. Quite the flex there, bucko. Made 424 horsepower on a little new edge Mustang GT. Dude, those cars are small, they're light. I mean, as you can see what Project WAP can do at 360 horsepower, imagine this bitch right here. It is a drop top though, which is a little bit of a downside, but he's got that cool fucking anti-roll bar right there. That is dope as fuck. And he's got the racing seats and the harnesses. Damn. I'm low-key jealous. Like, you want to trade for Project WAP? Let me know. Another new edge Mustang. Look at that, a 2002 Mustang GT supercharged. We got an SVT Eaton blower on top. Makes 10 and a half pounds of boost. If I saw that little bumblebee bitch rolling down the street, I would not think 10 and a half pounds of boost is being pumped through that new edge motor right there. 411 rear wheel horsepower, 400 and something torque. Rear wheels are 18 by 10 Forge Star D5 drag wheels. He's got a 295, 35, 18 Michelin Pilot Super Sports on a Borla exhaust. It's a little bit of a sleeper there, I'm not gonna lie. Like, like, like I said before, if I saw this little bumblebee bullshit going down the street, would not think supercharged. This is what I'm talking about right here. Look at all this breakdown. I love this type of shit. 2019 Hyundai Veloster. If that is a factory color, wow, Hyundai is, is killing it. Is, is it white? Is it white or gray? It's white. Okay, wait, is it white? I can't even fucking tell. Is it like a white or like a chalk gray? I don't know. I'm pretty hard over it anyways. Car apparently from factory makes 180 wheel horsepower. It's currently making 250 wheel horsepower. So that's quite the jump up from stock Hyundai bullshit. 
Some of his performance mods include a Lap 3 Pro Tuner, 93 Octane. He's got an AM intake. Velosa Tech Ram Intake Snorkel, HKS Blow-Off Valve, 60mm Throttle Body, Lowering Springs, and more. Aesthetic, he's got a Carbon Fiber Wing, Carbon Fiber Headlight Eyelids, Carbon Fiber Front Bumper Inserts, Carbon Fiber Rear Bumper Inserts, Carbon Fiber Mirrors, a whole bunch of Carbon Fiber. Everything aesthetically he did is Carbon Fiber, okay? If it ain't Carbon Fiber, this dude ain't buying it. I think these new Hyundais are, are kind of a step in the right direction. The old Hyundais are a little bit too round. This looks a lot more sporty, and I could see some kids, and I mean, shit, even myself, I could see myself driving this car. Next car is a 1995 BMW M3 5 speed. It's on Bilstein shocks and HR springs, HR front sway bar. It's on a fully rebuilt front suspension, Z3 steering rack, Euro style glass headlights, along with amber deletes. Apex Arc 8 wheels. I was actually looking at the Apex wheels for my Mustang a long time ago. Decent wheels, I'm not gonna lie. Shimoto radiator and new cooling system. His brother's got an Evo 10. That's why we're looking at one right here. Sorry, I'm a little bit stupid. So five speed as well, HKS coilovers, Tomei TI exhaust, Voltex wing, full carbon fiber arrow kit with fog light deletes, Braum bucket seats, and of course you gotta have Enki RPF1 wheels, because why the fuck not on an Evo? It's like the go-to wheel. I think you get them for free pretty much. If you, if you buy an Evo, I think Enki gives you free RPF ones. I think that, that's what I heard. It's obviously a joke. I already know there's gonna be some 12 year old saying, that's a lie. We all love sleepers, right? Well, let's take a look at this 2000 sleeper eclipse. It's swapped with a 6G74 3.5 from a VRX, aka a Mitsubishi Magna. Subaru STI injectors, pink 380 Kemzo fuel pump, universal medium size intercooler. Turbo is a GT35. Evo 8 MAF translator used in a 3 inch GM MAF. Wow, this is like a fucking freak of nature right here. Finishing final tune adjustments. It's making 400 plus wheel horsepower on 14 pounds of boost. Not the prettiest, but I'm not trying to win a beauty contest. Well, you got that right, but it's definitely way prettier than the one in Too Fast, Too Furious, and probably way fucking faster. I love sleepers. I love it when they put people to sleep, and you don't see many people doing Mitsubishi's justice like this anymore. That turbo looks pretty fucking meaty too, I'm not gonna lie. That's a, that's a scary looking turbo. Next car is a 2001 Audi B5 S4. Owner is 17 years old, fully paid by him, not sponsored by mommy and daddy. Twin Borg Warners, KO4 turbos, IE connecting rods, 2.8 cams. Front mount intercooler, as you can see from this photo right here, that thing is freaky looking. It looks like a spider is just wrapped around your fucking face. It's face fucking you. 660cc injectors, Bosch, 044 fuel pump. 84 millimeter MAF housing, unknown charge pipes, unknown catless downpipes, TR Motorsports FF10 wheels, wrapped in Continental Extreme Contacts, unknown coilovers, and an FX400 clutch. You can't freaking tell me if you saw this Audi getting groceries, you wouldn't think anything of it. But underneath that bumper is probably one of the dopest looking intercooler setups I have ever seen. Like, look at that, just like completely hidden back there. Wouldn't suspect a thing, and then boom, terrifying. Something born in a fucking BMW's owner's nightmares. Hope you guys love German cars because it seems like this episode is all German cars for the most part. This is an E36 BMW M3 and from this first photo, I mean, who cares? Looks like shit, right? Well, it kind of does. But once we start taking a look underneath the hood, you see it's got a completely forged LS6. It's got forged rods, Wiseco forged valve relief pistons, 228-232.600 cam, LS6 intake, high volume and pressure oil pump, F-body oil pan baffle kit, brand new LS7 clutch, brand new T56 Magnum transmission, and of course a big brake kit by Willwood to stop the bitch. This whole episode is just people swapping cool ass motors into cool ass cars. Rarely do you see these M3s clean. Like there's like one clean one in SoCal, there's another clapped out one in SoCal, but there's definitely not one rolling around with a Corvette engine underneath the hood. That, that, that's something you just don't see. He says the car still has AC, headliner is suede, M3 front and rear seats, missing rear bottoms, four point bolt-in roll bar. You're gonna need that because that's a lot of horsepower pumping through that little M3. Dope ass build. God damn, more fucking BMWs. A 2017 BMW 340i. It's got a B58 engine, single turbo inline 6.3 liter. Sounds a lot like a goddamn Supra. Oh, wait. Anyways, this one is full bolt on stage tune on 93 octane, making about 420 wheel horsepower. He's saying if his gauges can be trusted, it's probably closer to 470 wheel horsepower. He's saying the one with the carbon fiber front lip is the latest photo of it, but all the other ones are from this year. That front lip? Looks expensive. Please go slow over dips, okay? I destroyed my Super 1 first day. Tragic. 
still on the car. I just gotta go get it repaired. I'm just too lazy to do it. I like all the heat deflection shit. I know some of it is OEM, but like the gold tape and everything cool. Like, that's pretty fucking smart. <laughs> another freaking German car. I'm just going in order. Like, I'm not trying to do all German cars, but we got another Audi right here. This is a 1995 Audi S6 Quattro. Stage 3 tuning, bigger than stock Borg Warner EFR 6758 Turbo at 27 PSI. So it's got a three inch downpipe, adjustable 2B camber coilovers, Porsche calipers, forged internals, making around 420 and 425 horsepower. Tried keeping it looking as stock as possible, pretty fast for almost 5,000 pounds. That bitch is fucking heavy. I mean, it do look mostly bone stock. The wheels aren't my personal favorite. They look like something you'd see on a Camry, but it's, pretty much, it's a pretty good looking car. Kind of looks like a Camry or like an old Corolla if you think about it. Like, think of a 95 Corolla. Kind of looks like that. All right, we'll do, like, one or two more. We got a 2006 Mitsubishi Lancer Evo. He's got a Motec M800, a Borg Warner EFR 7163, ID1000 injectors. Crankshaft is a Kelford 272 272. Manifold full race. Intercooler is from ETS. Titanium exhaust. His brake system is gyro disc. Five-speed RS gearbox. Cusco stabilization bars. It's got a DC downpipe, custom turbo entrance, and iBox springs, making 490 horsepower. I am loving your guys' builds this episode. Just keep it coming. Keep it coming. I want all the horsepower. I, I want it all, okay? I love seeing this shit. I love seeing people actually build their cars. The exterior of this car looks mostly stock, but it is very tastefully done. And it's in great condition. Like, it looks pretty damn nice. All right, why not finish on another Evo? We have a 2010 Evo MR. It's making 460 all-wheel horsepower on E65 and 400 all-wheel horsepower on 93 octane. He has an ETS intake, IC piping, 4-inch intercooler, ETS downpipe, and test pipe, ultimate racing catback, Garrett 3576 68mm dual ball bearing turbo, tile QR blow-off valve, radium fuel rail with fuel pressure gauge, map, catch can, and key cogens. 18 by eight and a half. Finally, one without RPF1s. Stock suspension, but will be upgraded soon. A Gretti front lip, painted stock projector headlights. I need to get myself an all-wheel drive car. I think you guys, I think you guys would enjoy that. I think I would enjoy it, but I think you guys would enjoy an all-wheel drive car build too. Maybe Project WAP needs to go kick some rocks. I don't know. What do you guys think about Project WAP? More videos on Project WAP, less videos on Project WAP. I already don't make like any on him. But like honestly, if I was gonna sell one car, that'd be the one I'd sell. To buy something cool like this though. See you guys, like I'm not I'm not trying to just abandon stuff. I'm just you know, move on to the next thing. Also, at the end, he says he has a fully built dual clutch transmission by Cosmic Motorsports. That sounds expensive. Anyways, guys, let me know what you thought about these builds. I had a really good time looking at these builds. They were real, real nice. Like, and I'm not just saying that. Like any of those cars, I could see myself having fun in. And so I'm happy to see you guys owning them. Anyways, guys, subscribe to see more videos like this one. Go check out my racing footage with the Supra. Let me know which car from this video was your favorite. And until next video, peace.